In the system of Aristotelian logic, the square of opposition is a diagram representing the different ways in which each of the four propositions of the system is logically related to each of the others. The system is also useful in the analysis of syllogistic logic, serving to identify the allowed logical conversions from one type to another. Summary in traditional logic, a proposition is a spoken assertion, not the meaning of an assertion, as in modern philosophy of language and logic. A categorical proposition is a simple proposition containing two terms, subject and predicate, in which the predicate is either asserted or denied of the subject. Every categorical proposition can be reduced to one of four logical forms. These are the so-called a proposition, the universal affirmative, whose form in Latin is omna s est p, usually translated as every s is a p, the e proposition, the universal negative, Latin form nullim s s p, usually translated as no s a p, the i proposition, the particular affirmative, Latin quod am s s p, usually translated as sum s a p. The O proposition, the particular negative, Latin quod am s non est p, usually translated as sum s and not p. In tabular form, Aristotle states that there are certain logical relationships between these four kinds of proposition. He says that to every affirmation there corresponds exactly one negation, and that every affirmation and its negation are opposed such that always one of them must be true, and the other false. A pair of affirmative and negative statements he calls of contradiction. Examples of contradictories are, every man is white, and, not every man is white, no man is white, and, some man is white. Contrary statements are such that both cannot at the same time be true. Examples of these are the universal affirmative, every man is white, and the universal negative, no man is white. These cannot be true at the same time. However, these are not contradictories because both of them may be false. For example, it is false that every man is white, since some men are not white. Yet it is also false that no man is white, since there are some white men. Since every statement has a contradictory opposite, and since a contradictory is true when its opposite is false, it follows that the opposites of contraries can both be true, but they cannot both be false. Since subcontraries are negations of universal statements, they were called particular statements by the medieval logicians. Another logical opposition implied by this, though not mentioned explicitly by Aristotle, is alternation, consisting of subalternation and superalternation. Alternation is a relation between a particular statement and a universal statement of the same quality such that the particular is implied by the other. The particular is the subaltern of the universal, which is the particular superaltern. For example, if every man is white is true, its contrary, no man is white, is false. Therefore the contradictory, some man is white, is true. Similarly the universal, no man is white, implies the particular, not every man is white. In summary, universal statements are contraries. Every man is just, and, no man is just, cannot be true together, although one may be true and the other false, and also both may be false. Particular statements are subcontraries. Some man is just, and, some man is not just, cannot be false together. The particular statement of one quality is the subaltern of the universal statement of that same quality, which is the superaltern of the particular statement. Because in Aristotelian semantics, every A is B implies, some A is B, and, no A is B implies, some A is not B. Note that modern formal interpretations of English sentences interpret every A is B as for any X. X is A implies X is B, which does not imply some X is A. This is a matter of semantic interpretation, however, and does not mean, as is sometimes claimed, that Aristotelian logic is wrong. The universal affirmative and the particular negative are contradictories. 
If some A is not B, not every A is B. Conversely, though this is not the case in modern semantics, it was thought that if every A is not B, some A is not B. This interpretation has caused difficulties. While Aristotle's Greek does not represent the particular negative as some A is not B, but as not every A is B. Someone in his commentary on the Peri, Herman Ears, renders the particular negative as quod am a non est b, literally, a certain a is not a b. And in all medieval writing on logic it is customary to represent the particular proposition in this way. These relationships became the basis of a diagram originating with Boethius and used by medieval logicians to classify the logical relationships. The propositions are placed in the four corners of a square, and the relations represented as lines drawn between them, whence the name of the square of opposition. The problem of existential import, subcontraries, which medieval logicians represented in the form quod am a est b, and quod am a non est b, cannot both be false, since their universal contradictory statements cannot both be true. This leads to a difficulty that was first identified by Peter Abelard. Some A is B seems to imply something is A. For example, some man is white seems to imply that at least one thing is a man, namely the man who has to be white if some man is white is true. But some man is not white also seems to imply that something is a man, namely the man who is not white if some man is not white is true. But Aristotelian logic requires that necessarily one of these statements is true. Both cannot be false. Therefore it follows that necessarily something is a man, i.e., men exist. But surely men might not exist. For with absolutely no man existing, neither the proposition, every man is a man, is true nor, some man is not a man. Abelard also points out that subcontries containing subject terms denoting nothing, such as, a man who is a stone, are both false. If every stone man is a stone is true, also its conversion per accidents is true. But no stone is a stone man, because neither this man nor that man etc. is a stone. But also this, a certain stone man is not a stone, is false by necessity, since it is impossible to suppose it is true. Terence Parsons argues that ancient philosophers did not experience the problem of existential import as only the A and I forms had existential import. Affirmatives have existential import, and negatives do not. The ancients thus did not see the incoherence of the square as formulated by Aristotle because there was no incoherence to see. He goes on to cite medieval philosopher William of Ockham in affirmative propositions a term is always asserted to supposit for something. Thus, if it supposits for nothing the proposition is false. However, in negative propositions the assertion is either that the term does not supposit for something or that it supposits for something of which the predicate is truly denied. Thus a negative proposition has two causes of truth, and points to Boethius a translation of Aristotle's work as giving rise to the mistaken notion that the O form has existential import. But when Boethius comments on this text he illustrates Aristotle's doctrine with the now famous diagram, and he uses the wording, some man is not just. So this must have seemed to him to be a natural equivalent in Latin. It looks odd to us in English, but he wasn't bothered by it. Modern squares of opposition. In the 19th century, George Ball argued for requiring existential import on both terms in particular claims but allowing all terms of universal claims to lack existential import. This decision made Venn diagrams particularly easy to use for term logic. The square of opposition, under this Boolean set of assumptions, is often called the modern square of opposition. In the modern square of opposition, there are no claims or contradictories, as are E and I. But all other forms of opposition cease to hold, there are no contraries, subcontraries, or subaltons. Thus, from a modern point of view, it often makes sense to talk about the opposition of a claim. 
rather than insisting as older logicians did that a claim has several different opposites, which are in different kinds of opposition with the claim. Gottlob Frege's Bigraf Schrift also presents a square of oppositions, organized in an almost identical manner to the classical square, showing the contradictories, subalternates and contraries between four formulae constructed from universal quantification, negation and implication. Algirdus Julian Grimas semiotic square was derived from Aristotle's work, logical hexagons and other bisimplexes. The square of opposition has been extended to a logical hexagon which includes the relationships of six statements. It was discovered independently by both Auguste and says Martin Robert Blanchet. It has been proven that both the square and the hexagon, followed by a logical cube, belong to a regular series of n-dimensional objects called logical bisimplexes of dimension n. The pattern also goes even beyond this square of opposition in modal logic. The logical square, also called square of opposition or square of Apuleius has its origin in the four marked sentences to be employed in syllogistic reasoning. Every man is white, the universal affirmative and its negation not every man is white, the particular negative on the one hand, some men are white. The particular affirmative and its negation no man is white, the universal negative on the other. Robert Blanche published with VRIN his Structures Intellectuals in 1966 and since then many scholars think that the logical square or square of opposition representing four values should be replaced by the logical hexagon, which by representing six values is a more potent figure because it has the power to explain more things about logic and natural language.